Yo, what's good, Right Side Nation? Mike Hanley here with RightSideNews.com. It is August the 9th, and I am throwing together a video on the Walk Away Movement. And I, it's more of a holistic um, look at the Walk Away Movement and I think why it's going on and what it really means. And, and I think it means something beautiful for this country. I think it really, the walk away movement, meaning people are walking away from the Democratic Party, from, excuse me, from the Democrat Party. People are walking away from the Democrat Party. And there are so many different reasons. There's so many different reasons that people are walking away. And I have some videos that kind of show that, some videos from people their own words, not my words, their words. And I think it's, you know, people that are articulating this stance so beautifully. And, um, you know, there are a lot of black people that are walking away from the Democratic plantation, the Democrat plantation. And um, I think people are really waking up. People are woke, folks. It's happening. It's happening. And let me tell you, the media thinks that Trump doesn't have as much support as he does, as they always like to narrate. But Trump has the highest approval of any president ever in the Republican Party. He has holistic support. I think it's somewhere 90%. No president has ever been that highly regarded. And you know why? It's because of the job that he's doing. Not only that, because it's the promises that he made, and it's about the promises that he has kept. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and flip over to a few videos of why I think people are leaving the Democrat Party. And it has more to do with, it has more to do with the things that are going on and people are seeing them for what they actually are. And it's not just in the media, but it's, it's these instances where Trump supporters are being berated, or it's the opinions of these far left, um, far left protesters that sit here and say the things that they say about the Second Amendment, about Trump supporters, about um, Donald Trump himself. And people, they get tone deaf. They hear so much hate. They hear so much division. And people, people love. People, for the most part, are lovers. They love one another. They love themselves. They love their families. They love their country. And they want something to love. They want something to believe in. And I think this is the primary reason. People want to unite. People are looking for something. People want to look to their neighbor and say, hello, good morning, how are you today? Hold the door for their neighbor. Hold the door for the old lady that's coming into the store. Say hi to the black man, in my case, that's next to them. Or the black lady, or in my case, someone saying hello to me. People want that human interaction. They want to be able to communicate show love and respect for one another. And that is something that people are not getting in the Democrat Party. They're hearing slander and a whole bunch of negativity. So I'm going to go ahead and shut up here, and I'm going to flip over to the other side and show you all a few videos and then go dig a little bit deeper into these walk away stories. So I'm going to show you instances of why I think people are walking away. And then I'm going to show you actual walk away videos. And I don't in these videos aren't a direct co correlation to the to the walk away movement. I want to make that clear. However, it's it's me putting two and two together. And seeing why people are walking away. In my case, I never had to walk away because I never really believed in that garbage. But I'm not saying that because I think I'm better. I just, I was just raised to have a very critical eye. Although I will say, I will say, and in my case, that I believed in some 
of the traditional Republican narrative where you had, if you were a Democrat, you were this, if you were a Republican, you were this. I mean, as I got older, I'm 30 years old now, as I got older, I became more and more critical of seeing about what happened with the, with the Bushes. So we had the Clintons, we had the Bushes, or uh, George W. Bush, and then we had Barack Obama, who was, by the way, Barack Obama was a complete disaster, uh, truly the Manchurian candidate. But that's, that's for another day, another dollar. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over and I'll show you a few things here. He's not only bad because he's a liar, he's bad because he doesn't know how to inspire people or evoke the emotion in them of, of what about his rallies? And knowing. And there, first of all, people are paid, Chris. You know that. People were paid since he went down on the escalator. He pays people to show up at right, those rallies. But I rallies. don't that know that fact. that's. But I don't know that that's why he gets tens of thousands at the rallies. I think he ca captures a well, lot of emotion. He doesn't get for tens people. of thousands. When did he get tens of thousands at a the last rally? Tell me one. Oh no, not at the at the Tampa. I think they only had nine thousand. <laughs> Girl, bah, Trump, Donald Trump, please stop being childish and give this woman a double bacon cheeseburger with extra tomatoes and a Diet Coke so she can shut up. <laughs> so sit down somewhere because we are supporting Trump for free because we love our country. He Now, that was a little bit more savage than I would go, but she, Rosie O'Donnell, she is one of the, the talking heads of the left, and she's going to sit here and tell people that Donald Trump pays 9,000 Americans to show up at the rallies, and not only this, there was something like 70 to 80 million people that showed up and voted in the last election. Do you think you paid all those people? I mean, my God, I mean, the guy's rich, but good Lord. Let's be real here. Come on. Come on, Rosie. Only Rosie O'Donnell. There we go. There we go. God, I'm having fun, are you? I tell you what, this is a beautiful thing. Hold on, let me flip over this one real quick. Need to start from scratch with the whole gun issue. You know, we, we have people who think that it's okay to kill an intruder into their house. People who think that it's okay to kill an intruder into their house. You know, if an if a, if a, if a intruder in your house came before a judge, they would not get the death penalty. Mm, wouldn't happen. So we need to have a whole different like mindset reset. Shame, 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 A lot of people have been saying, quote unquote, ban uh, fully semi automatic guns. Do you believe in that? Uh, I do. I do. Just it's too fast. Why? 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 <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, have a good march or rally. Hey, thank you. So, so this lady, she doesn't think it's okay for somebody to pre protect themselves in their own house that we need to change our thinking. See, this is where you're losing people. This is where people are getting lost on the left. They're, they're leaving the left because nobody believes that. If anybody's sitting home with their family, watching the tube, it's nine o'clock at night and somebody barges in the door, you better bet your ass that the man of the household or the lady of the household is going to protect their family and they're going to do whatever the hell it takes to get that job done. And so what many people will say to this lady, including myself, is why not just leave your doors open? Just leave them unlocked at night, leave the door open with the lights on and just invite them in. Put a, oh, a sign in your front yard that says, come on in come on in, my, what, what's mine is yours. And if she feels that way, great. But at the same time, I don't want her to get hurt. I don't want her to get hurt at all. And I have this grin because I think it's so ridiculous what she's saying. Because 
She needs safety. Her family needs safety. And do we necessarily, or do I necessarily want to kill anybody that comes in my door that I don't want there? No. But if they are a threat, a clear and present danger to me, you better bet that I'm doing what I have to do to stay around. And if it means their ass, well, then that's what it means. Because let me tell you, folks, I'm not, I'm sure as hell not going to go down without a fight. And I can guarantee you that person that's coming into my house unwanted, they're not going to go down without a fight either. And so this is the whole idea. This is why people are sitting here and they're watching people like this on the left. And I'm not saying this is what the left stands for, although some, some more and more people on the far left are leaning this way. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely insane. So she's saying we have to change our thought process. Well, I think she needs a reality check, okay? That's what I think needs to happen. So that's just my two cents on that video. I'm going to go ahead and throw over to this one here. We'll get another one going. We have a kid. He's 10 years old. Pulls himself out of a wheelchair. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's standing it up. He's doing whatever it takes to stand up for the national anthem, to show his patriotism, to show what it means to be an American. And that's a beautiful thing. And then I'm going to jump to this video. We have a veteran. And this guy, he's got something to say to a councilwoman. Okay, but if that's there it is. I wholeheartedly respect your right to protest, to take a knee, to lay down, to burn the flag, to do whatever it is that you show please. Okay, but if that's what you would like to do, do that on your own time. When you become a selected, an elected official, you become a representative of all of Haddam and all the constituencies. There's a reason why the lady that represents justice has scales in one hand and sword in the other in a blindfold. She does not look to see who she's going to stand just for and who not. But unfortunately, one of us, the left person, decided to pull down the blindfold and start peeking. Okay? That said, you ran as a Democrat. But once you became elected, unfortunately, you have to represent all of your constituency. Yes. Last week and this week, you told at least half the town, I don't care whether I offend you, and I am going to act on my win. So what this gentleman is referring to is the lady who is an elected official that decided not to stand for the national anthem. And so you have two sides of this here, right? And I think he makes some good points, but I want to talk about the kid first. This kid is 10 years old. He has no legs. He's in a wheelchair. And this son of a gun works his tail off to get out of his wheelchair to stand for the national anthem. Think about that. That's motivation. That's heart. That's something going on. And that's positivity. If you really think about it, that guy has heart. He's got something, he's got something that this Congress lady or this elected official, I don't know exactly what her name was. I think she's out of Ohio. I am not, don't mark my words on that. But she's an elected official and she decides that she's gonna kneel. And what you just saw there was a veteran calling her out that she needed if she was going to kneel, that she needed to kneel on her own time because 
she ran as a Democrat, but as you heard him say, she is now the elected of official and she represents all of the people all of the people white black green republican democrat independent hey green again the green party i don't know i don't know she represents everybody the guy who didn't even vote technically she represents him or her for that matter and so these are some of the instances that people are seeing and these are just small ones. Now, this one here is one that is really, this one is really a doozy for the left. So this meme here shows the past, right, where you have white racist people yelling at an african-american lady and i don't know exactly who that lady is in that picture i'll be completely honest but the lady on the right happens to be candace owens who was yelled at and berated at a coffee shop at a coffee shop and so what you're seeing here is a complete flip of what the democrat party says they are you're seeing an entirely different shift from where the democrat party was or claimed to be you have candace owens who is a black woman who is a trump supporter who is conservative supports donald trump and then she is the one that is being driven out of coffee shops. And mind you, this is 2018. We're supposed to be segregation in the South. We're supposed to be removed from this. And in my opinion, what's happening here is exactly what used to happen. This is the same thing. Now, maybe not to the same extent, but what you're seeing here is a black lady who is being berated and thrown out of a coffee shop because of her views. And that this is another reason why people are walking away. And you have CJ Pearson, who's a young African American man. I'm flipping over here to his uh, to his tweet. Real Candace Owens is a dangerous woman in the eyes of the left. So he's not surprised. He's not surprised about what happened, but he's saying that the left can no longer control the black so you have many black people who are leaving the democrat plantation and they're leaving because of instances like this they are seeing that it doesn't matter necessarily the color of your skin it more matters what you believe in and the democrat party is saying oh we're here for the blacks we're here for this well that's only if you agree with them that's only if you agree with them. I sure as hell don't agree with the far left. I don't agree with most of what the left has going on, including the media. I mean, the media is number one. And so when you have Candace Owens in this position, it's just, I mean, <laughs> bless me, excuse me. It's, uh, it's truly a shame. It's truly a shame. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and um, turn on this youtube video and this is a real solid now these are the walk away videos that um i was talking about i was rocking the red maga so anyway i done did my shopping i done bought all my sandwiches and then juices and and food for the week and i'm standing in the line and i got a brother in front of me and yeah, he, he had rode up on this motorcycle. It was a real cool motorcycle. But anyway, he was standing in front of me and he couldn't help but notice a six foot two, 330 pound man rocking the red MAGA. And the brother looked at me and he didn't get crazy. He didn't have Trump derangement syndrome. He didn't come at me crazy or nothing, but he simply, he looked perturbed for a while. 
And meanwhile, I'm just still rocking. You know, I'm on my phone, you know, looking at Facebook and all this stuff, waiting in line. And so he did. He built up <laughs> enough courage. And he said, why, brother? Why are you wearing that hat? It's, it's racist, man. It's against everything we as black people stand for. And I just cannot believe that a black man would, would wear that red MAGA cap. And everybody looked at us, you know, because it was a mixed crowd and there was, uh, was some white people there, some black people there. And everybody turned around to see my response. And I didn't get upset with him. I actually liked the fact that he wanted to engage in conversation. And I said, I'm so happy that you asked me why I'm wearing this, this, you know, this MAGA cap. Is because, yes, you're right, it's symbolic. It's symbolic of American exceptionalism. And, and let me tell you why. And I said, many, many, many years ago, when I was 26 years old, I was actually homeless and sleeping on the streets. I was forgotten by everybody. I was alone. I was robbed. I was beat up and literally urinated on. I had nothing, man. And I started to work, and I was determined to change my circumstances. So I prayed, and you know, I, I sought out Christ, and I prayed. I said, Father, give me the, the, the energy and the passion to change my life because I want things better. I'm tired of being homeless. I'll explain on another video why I was homeless way back then, 26 years ago when I was a very young man. But let's just talk about now. So anyway, I was homeless and I prayed and by hard work and also the support of a lot of people, fellow American citizens, black, white, Jew, Gentile, everything, you know, I was able to overcome that situation. But as I was going, I remember when I was uh, young and I was getting food stamps. And there's nothing wrong with getting food stamps if you need it. But I was getting food stamps and because I told you I had just got through from being homeless. I had elevated from being sleeping on the streets to sleeping in a crack house. Then the dope boy whose crack house I was sleeping in, he got arrested. And then so then I had to find another place and I worked and I had like three or four jobs working, working, working. I elevated from the crack house to uh, a house that was had rats and roaches in it. Then I elevated to an apartment who just had roaches in it. Then I elevated to an apartment who just had mold. And then I elevated and kept on going and kept on going. And then finally, years, years, years later, after having seven wonderful children, being a dad, I finally found my American dream through hard work, patience, persistence, and the grace of God and the support of Americans. I said, so hearing what that guy had just had to say, I mean, that dude is for real. If we're looking at what that guy just said, the reality of the situation is he sure as hell isn't going to listen to some lady that started talking about we can't defend ourselves when we allow people into our house. Now, earlier in his video, I didn't show it. He was talking about the se Second Amendment. You saw the shirt that he had on. He is a gun-toting Trump supporter. He had a gun. He called it ebony, okay? He had some guns. The guy's for real. But the, the, the difference you're starting to see here is people that live in reality or this idea that there is this pie-in-the-sky utopia that the left is going to create for people. And I think what so many Americans are realizing that it only happens through hard work, determination. I mean, you heard what that guy said. He started on food stamps. He was living in a, his, uh, a crack dealer's house. Now, it wasn't his crack dealer at the time, but he was living in his house. Then he went to an apartment that had uh, roaches and rats. Then he moved up to another apartment that just had roaches. I mean, this guy worked his tail off. He probably had three or four jobs. The whole point is, is that he worked for what he earned. And you, you see these other far left ideas that, oh, the government's going to give it to you. Well, if you rely on the government, you're going to be 
miserable the whole the whole rest of your life. So I really wanted to show what that guy had to say because that guy was pretty badass. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over um, to this next gentleman here. He's he's has some really good stuff to. So I'm out at the pool. Very difficult to chew and digest. Um, but it was a piece of stake for me to, to chew and digest the fact that the Democratic Party historically ha ha has hated black people. Now, nowadays, people will argue that the Democratic Party hates America and hates everybody, and I would concur with that argument. But when you look at history and you look at the people that are being used, abused, and tricked and conned into supporting the Democratic Party, I have to say the race that's getting the raw end of the deal is black people. So I'm not going to sit here and say that I necessarily say that the Democratic Party hates black people. But I think that that gives you a little insight into where black, some black Americans are going with this. And the reason I say that is because the gentleman goes on to further say that it was the Democratic Party or the Democrat Party that essentially started and ran the Ku Klux Klan. And they hung, beat, and killed many, many African Americans. And so I think when people are starting to take a critical eye, not only of what's going on today with uh, the far left, because they're trying to intimidate and slander people cons constantly, I think people are starting to look back at history and see the reality of how the Democrat Party and the liberal media has manipulated the African American community over time and has essentially caused and in essentially abetted a welfare state for the African American community in the United States. Now that's just to a certain extent, that's not holistically, but I'm saying that in many cases, in many cases, the African American community is gonna vote Democrat and I don't think they have anything to show for it. And I would say anything to show for it since I've been around and I'm 30 years old. So since about the 1980s, I mean, look at Bill Clinton, the law he put into place. It was the war on drugs. That war on drugs affected predominantly the African American community in the United States. I'm going to go ahead and throw on a different video for you. Hopefully this one is a little bit more clear, but I, I found this one to be very interesting. Hi everyone, um, I'm a little nervous. I wanted to make this video because I wanted to explain why I have decided not to vote for Democrats probably ever again. I am an independent voter. Um, I'm unaffiliated, not part of any party. And I feel like I am the demographic that the Democrats should be trying to get but it seems like they're only trying to go for their radical base. I am not a feminist, and it just seems like if you're not a feminist, the Democrats don't really seem to be talking to you. They just kind of seem to be regurgitating feminist points that I'm just not interested in. Um, so I am embarrassed to say this, but I was watching CNN and MSNBC, during the election and not that it's okay to insult president trump because i don't agree with that either but what really caught my eye um was when it was on trump supporters calling them racist everything racist xenophobic transphobic bigots just in pretty much calling them stupid just were these relentless insults. And I was looking at the TV and I was seeing his rallies. There were so many people there. And so eventually this, I just felt they were being so abusive to these, you know, to, to Trump supporters. So I decided one day that I was gonna go on my phone to try to, you know, get to know Trump supporters. 
uh, know why they support him. Because I just couldn't believe that these thousands, millions of people were like pretty much what the media was telling me were the worst people in the world. I just thought there's no way that that could be true. So then I went online and I just was so angry when I, I looked at thousands and thousands of hours of just different Trump supporters and saying why they specifically decided to vote for him because all of them have their different reasons. And they were such nice people. They were smart. They were kind. They were loving. They were extremely well informed. And they were actually making arguments. They weren't just name calling. Because, you know, newsflash to a lot of people, name calling is not an argument. Calling somebody racist and bigots, it's not an argument. I, it, it, it makes me sad that clearly college is failing us because I have my doctorate. So I'm a college educated person and I'm embarrassed to be right now because for some reason, a lot of college educated people think name calling is, is some sort of argument and it's gonna get people on your side just because you're screaming racist every five minutes. So to, you know, to be honest with you, I saw and I was so angry at how much I was lied to by the media because the Trump supporters were not anything like what they told me they were. So I just, I, then I went down the rabbit hole and I started finding out how much they've lied to me my whole life. How much the media has lied to me my whole life. And I know people think I'm silly because they probably have known this for a long time. Unfortunately, I have my doctorate, but you can be intelligent, but not wise. So I realized I had a very humble experience realizing that I was not wise. Um, I got so angry, I cut my cable. I will never watch the mainstream media again. Um, I get my news from independent media, um, and I'm so much smarter than I ever have been, much more awake than I ever have been. So you see this lady here who is a is a, a college graduate. She has her doctorate. She's an intelligent person, and she was somebody who was believing what the media was saying about Trump supporters for a while, for a while. And she finally realized after enough of the, the hate that was, the media was pushing towards, towards, toward Trump supporters, that there was almost no way that this was in fact reality. And she figured it out for herself. And I think what you have from the media is the media uses its power to control and manipulate the minds of the people. Now, people will say, oh, that's absolutely crazy to think that. Well, then why has the CIA used the media and propaganda over the years to not only influence foreign elections, but also American elections? Now, people are going to go out there and say, oh, you're crazy for saying that. But the reality of the situation is that the CIA does use propaganda consistently, not only here in the United States, but abroad to achieve the goals that they would like done. Now, I don't always agree with what the CIA is doing, but I think there are bits and pieces of what the CIA does, and it's utilized either by the CIA through the media or the media itself is a propaganda machine and if people hear it long enough and and consistently enough they begin to believe that that is actual reality so you see this lady her own words there a person who has a doctorate switching away from the democrat party because of all the hate that was thrown toward trump supporters so in fact, maybe this this propaganda and this nonsense that is thrown out there is actually has a, 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 neg, a negative overall effect, a negative net effect for the Democrat Party. And I have one more video that I want to show you all. I walk away. So why did I decide to walk away from the Democratic Party? I was raised in a Democratic household in New York City, predominantly every African American here is a Democrat. And I'm not lying, this is a blue state. 
uh, I wanted to come before you today just to dump my truths and tell you why someone that's uh, ex-felon um, and emerged in the hip hop in the in the hip hop in the hip hop culture as as deep as I am decided to move from the left to the right. Um, Democrats are lies. All you've seen since you were a kid, if you were black, was these people give you um, promises on things they were going to change, how things were going to change, how things would be better. And the only thing I've seen is things become worse, worse and worse. Hospitals are closing, schools are closing, and now the introduction of charter schools are here. Um, I can't even understand what the difference between the two is. But I know that if one isn't working and uh, another system has to step in, we have to think about who's responsible for it, who's running the this, this system. It's the Democrats, period. Destroyed the black family, destroyed the black home, introduced all of these bills that had African-Americans like me, that was first time offenders, doing years in prison for crimes where they could have just got probation and would have never committed a crime again. Fact, I was arrested 14 years ago for selling keys of cocaine. They didn't catch me selling keys of cocaine. No, not at all, period. And I promise you, I'm not lying to you. They literally manufactured a number of coke that they decided that I was able to sell and that's what they charged me with, period. I, they took away six years of my life for something that I never did again. Never did again, never. Ever, ever, ever did I ever sell crack cocaine again. I never did, completely left it alone. These laws are made by Democrats. Federal sentencing guidelines, three strike laws, they came from the Clinton administration, who was one of the worst individuals on this planet. Has a black son. Yeah, I'm gonna put this out there for y'all. I hope this fucking video does go viral. Has a black son. His wife didn't give a fuck about taking money from a whole bunch of other people. And she didn't Danny Williams. Danny Williams. Right? This isn't gonna be one of those walkaways where I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna sound all polite, and I'm gonna fix my voice, and I'm gonna articulate myself to the best of my ability. No, fuck that. I'm gonna tell you that I'm fucking fed up and I'm tired. I'm tired of the lies, I'm tired of the games. This guy's in office right now, the, uh, uh, Donald Trump. I'm sorry, President Trump. President Trump is in office right now. And instead of all these fucking Democrats sitting there saying, the, he's, he, we're gonna get rid of him, impeach him, impeach him, impeach him. Won't you introduce some fucking bills that can help change what the fuck is going on? Because here it is, this is a man in office who's not responsible for none of this shit these fucking guys caused, period. And they don't wanna help dig us up out of this shit. All they trying to do is push it on television so you can see it, so they can say that he's a racist, he's this, he's that. All you hear people saying, I hate Donald Trump, he's a racist, he's racist. And I ask him, what has he done to you? It was the thing he said, but what has he done to you? It's the things he said, but what has he done to you? I can't be part of a party where you can't even articulate how you feel. If I can't have a set of my own values and if I can't believe what I want to believe and if I don't, then I'm ostracized by these motherfuckers. It's ridiculous. You have a bunch of uneducated motherfuckers following the same opinion. And I'm sorry to say this, but the majority of African-Americans that are down with this motherfucking party are uneducated. You can't be highly educated because then you know that the history of your party is one of the Klansmen. Mine, I mean, hey, that guy's aggressive. He's to the point. But he is, what he's saying is coming from the heart because he is, he is realizing, and I think this goes back to what Trump said to Hillary Clinton. He said, if you had all this time, you've been a career politician, why didn't you do anything to change things? Why did you not take the opportunity when you had it to make the changes? And that is talking this gentleman that I just had on is talking directly to that point, saying Bill Clinton, he's responsible for the war on drugs and putting it. that gentleman who was affected by it for six years. And apparently they didn't catch him with a certain amount of cocaine. Instead, they caught him with the amount or they, they put him away based on the amount that he believed uh, or that the the DEA believed, or the district attorney, whoever is the person putting the sentence together, believed that that gentleman could produce. And how the hell would anybody really know? But the whole idea here is I wanted to just sit down, show you some videos about what was going on with 
the left and then why you're seeing people walk away from the left. And I think it's clear based on what I've shown to the walk away videos of why people are fed up with the nonsense that has been spewed by the Democrat Party and the media for far too long. And people are walking away, they're waking up, people are woke. So we're excited about this. It's a positive movement and uh, hashtag walk away. Thank you very much, Mike Hanley with rightsidenews.com. Don't be left, be right.